Okay, so my encore has just started up on my other screen, but I've brought over here the dialog box just so we can see it. Um, we're going to go to New Project. And let me just drag that screen on here. And when you go to New Project, we can give first of all a name and location. So I'm going to call this Alien. And I'm going to browse to a location. So I suggest you save it in the same place as um, you've been saving your project. So I'm going to save it to where my motion menu is. DV, D, um, because we're working with DVDs here. And I'm going to change from NTSC to PAL. Depending on which project you're working on, you might want to change it to something else too. And I'm going to go to OK. And now, if I bring on Encore over, um, we're ready to go. So from here, I'm going to import that as a menu. And you've got two different types of main assets in Encore. You've got menus and timelines. Timelines are for videos that need their own independent timeline to play. So think of it kind of like Premiere. Down here is your main timeline you can edit in, or you can rather adjust things in. Over here we have our projects window. We have a menus window, so all your menus will appear here, and all your timelines will appear in this timeline window. And this is information on your build, how much of the disk is being used, so you can reduce the quality on certain images and stuff as well. So if it's, if it's going over the amount of a DVD size, you can reduce the quality of one of the videos a little bit. So it fits. Um, the project window shows everything. So I'm going to go File, Import as Menu. And from here I've got my main menu. Open. OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to preview from here. So you'll see there's a little circle here with a little play symbol in it. That's called Set as First Play. Um, that means when the DVD goes in, that will be the first thing that plays. You may wish to change that, and you can change that by clicking on any of the um, timelines or menus, by going right click, and then you can set as first play. I can clear as first play at the moment because it's the only item, but I'll be able to set it as first play. So you might have an FBI warning or some copyright beforehand or something about the DVD. Um, I can preview it by right clicking here and going preview from here, or I can right click into the main menu window here and preview from here as well. If I preview from here, here's my preview window. And you can see that the highlights are visible underneath. And this round button here is basically, it works like a DVD um, remote control. So I can just click up and down. I can also click this little button here and this tells me what number on the remote control would go to which button and also the priority of them, so that's num button number one, number two, number three, so if I press down it will go to number two, if I press down again it will go to number three and up, up, OK. Um, I also over on this side get a list of properties depending on what I'm clicking on. So if I click on the main menu, here's a list of different properties I can change to the main menu. If I click on a button, you'll see it changes as well. So I can change different things here associated to whichever asset I'm adjusting. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my Photoshop document and close down both of these images because I don't want this next step to get confusing. Because when looking at the highlights on these, if I just preview from here, and I'll do it this time by right clicking over here and preview from here you'll see that the highlights actually pretty weak. Um, in fact, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on your screen at all, but it is moving up and down, but it's, it's not bright enough. And what you can do is, if I go to my Menus window, I can right-click on Main Menu and Edit in Photoshop. And it opens up a temporary version of the Photoshop document that can then be adjusted. If I open up the highlights, what I can do is just change the opacity, up to say 45 there, this one 45, and this one 45. Save it, and then I'll close it just in case I decide to change anything later. And now, if 
I preview from here, you'll see that the highlights are better. Um, I don't know whether some of you might have an issue as well with the screen size. Um, if you do have an issue with the screen size, it's because of pixel aspect ratio correction. And along the bottom, depending on which version you're in, uh, where the layout of the buttons are, there will be a button called Correct Menu Pixels for TV Display. Some of you might have your display like that. So if you find the button along the bottom, I think in CS4, it's around here somewhere. Um, correct Menus for TV Display, and it will come back out into this widescreen version again. So it looks properly good. OK, so basically what we're going to do now is create another menu in Photoshop for these buttons to link up to. Um, we'll probably only do just the one, which will be the extras. So if we go back into Photoshop now, and open Recent, and I can even open the temporary one that was originally created with the better highlights. Um, but I'm just going to go to the original one, the main menu. But if you made some substantial changes, you might want to open up the temporary one. Right, what I'm going to do now is go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as our second menu. So I'm going to call this Extras. Save, OK and all I'm going to do is come along and just change the text. So it just reads something different. So behind the scenes and here. I might change it to, um, let me see, let me just uh, say it again, hr, or rather h.r.geiger, oh, let me spell it right, who's the designer of the aliens. And the play button at the top here, I'm going to change to main menu, or you could have it as back or something like that. Okay, let's just save that again with the changes. Apply my transformation. There we go. Now if I jump back into Encore again, I'm going to go File, Import as Menu, and I'm going to choose Extras, and now you'll see my Extras menu has jumped into both my Project window and my Main Menu window. Now all I'm going to do here is I'm only going to link up a couple of the buttons. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link the Extras menu uh, button to the Extras menu itself. And I do that by clicking on, so I'm on my main menu, I click on the Extras window. And where it says Link here, I can either use the drop down here to go to Extras, and I can choose which button it'll be on. And actually they say Play Copy here, I really should have changed the names of those. Um, or I can link it to Extras that way. So now if I preview from the main menu and click on extras it goes to my second menu obviously with the slightly faded highlights so I want to change that again we're doing that just so we can get this embedded in how we work I'll just close down that extra menu so it doesn't get confused or that wouldn't do it anyway I'm going to go to my you'll notice that it's missing here from the options unless I'm on the menus window I go to Extras, Edit Extras, Edit in Photoshop. OK. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three, turn them on, and do it quicker this way, get them up to 45%. 
and I highlighted all three there by just holding down control and selecting the layers saving it there we go main menu preview from here there we go and we now need to link main menu back to extras so I've got the main menu button selected name I can change that there and I can change the name of that button though it says play here I could change it to any text I want actually and it will change the text as well which is a really neat feature in CS 5.5 um, but I'm just going to select the main menu link drag back to main menu and there we go and now let's preview again from here main menu extras there we go play extras gallery click on extras there we go and back to main menu and to end this part of the tutorial what we're going to do now is we're just going to bring in some video that when we click play will play so if I go to file import as and this time I'm going to put it as a timeline let me go up to my assets folder and alien scene okay you'll see now although I'm in my menus window it hasn't appeared but over here I've got a timeline and a scene uh, this is untranscoded, it has to be transcoded sometimes, especially if you use motion menus to actually see it moving. So if you have problems without seeing the video working, you need to transcode it by going right click and transcode now. And there are other ways of doing that within this program as well. Um, you can also create chapters, which we'll get to at some other point. But for the moment, I'm going to go to main menu, double click on that, click on the play button, and I pick whip not to the video, it won't let me pick up to the video to the timeline and now let's preview from here and I click play and the video plays now if I go to the timeline properties as well you'll see here there's an option for what it's going to do and its end action at the moment is not set I'm going to get it to return either to the last menu which would be the main menu or you can do it by the pick whip and go back to main menu that way so basically when the video ends it's going to know where to go next so now what I'll do is I'll preview it from the main menu again play and what we'll do is I'll just skip to the end here by pausing the video and then it goes back to the main menu like that so in the next main part of this tutorial we're going to be creating a seamless interaction between this menu and the other menu so it doesn't jump so much like that so it's got an animated sequence between it because although it looks okay here because we're using the same background if it had a different background um, we won't, might want something else to happen so I want it to act a bit cooler and seem a bit more seamless